So today I want to talk to you about influence and increasing your influence not by talking but by listening. Too many of us think that the best way to influence others is to share our opinions and to talk our way into influence. But most of the, the most influential people I know, first and foremost, are very good listeners. They seek first to understand, then to be understood. And I'd like to present to you in the world we're living in right now, that's needed more than ever. How do we become better listeners? So I want to give you three different types of listening and which ones I think are best for really influencing people and meaningfully impacting other people's lives. The weakest form of listening is what we would call subjective listening. A subjective listener does not listen to understand, does not even listen to respond, only as a token question and then goes on to say whatever it is they want to say. Let me show you what I mean. When I worked in the restaurant business as a kid, as many people did, uh, the boss, the owner of the company, was a, was a wonderful lady, and she'd been in the, the service industry her entire life. So she was very used to this normal exchange of pleasantries that we do in daily American life. So I'd come in every day, and she'd say, Sebastian, it's so good to see you. How are you today? And I began to realize she asked the same question in the same tone every day, not only to me, but to everyone. And her response to whatever you said was more or less always the same, which was, that's so amazing. Oh, that's so great to hear. Really, no matter what somebody said, her response was always the same. So I did an experiment. So one day I came in and she asked me, Sebastian, how are you? It's so good to see you. And I said, thank you for asking. Actually, I've had a really bad day. My dog died, I got an accident on the way to work, and I'm pretty sure I have cancer. Pretty extreme. Predictably, her response was, ah, that's amazing, I'm so glad to hear it, as she continued on her day. This is subjective listening. You're not actually listening to what the person is saying. You already know what you're going to say next. It's an automatic response. There is nothing internally that suggests that you're actually listening to what the person says. This is obviously neither influential or very effective. But many of us do this in very innocent ways throughout our day. Our children, our significant other, our friends, our employees ask questions and we nod in agreement without actually hearing what they're saying and we go on to say whatever it is we wanted to say. This is not a great way to influence people and it really doesn't demonstrate any level of value for them. I would suggest be careful how often you use subjective listening when you don't have an intent to understand or really hear what the person is saying. The second kind of listening is far more effective. It's called objective listening. An objective listener is listening to understand and they are listening for content to respond to. So an objective listener using uh, the example of, of the, the boss I had at the serving in the serving industry Objective listening is a step above subjective listening and a significant jump forward in influence. Objective listening involves actually listening to understand what the person is saying and responding to the content they're offering. As an example, you're talking to your spouse or your spouse is talking to you about their day. And they say, you know, I had a really tough day today. Uh, we had a tough loss at work and we're under a big deadline right now to get it done. A subjective listener would say, that's nice, honey. What do you want to do for dinner tonight? The objective listener says, wow, babe, I'm really sorry to, to hear that. It sounds like you had a really rough day at work today. You guys had a big loss, and you're under the gun for a big deadline. It's a helpful thing to do is just to repeat back what you're hearing the person say to stay in context. This is the objective listening. People feel heard, even if you just say the last three or four words that they said, repeating back to them makes them feel heard, like you genuinely are hearing what they're saying and want to respond to what they're saying. This takes actually listening to them uh, as you need to respond back. So as a, as a pro tip here with objective listening, if this is hard for you to do, you can communicate as the listener by just repeating back what you're hearing them say. But objective listeners respond to the content that is provided, not just a planned response or a rote response uh, that had nothing to do with what was being shared. This is very, very effective especially in a coaching teaching situation in which the person is genuinely trying to share where they're coming from. 
But the one that I like the most is the intuitive listener. A lot of therapists and coaches are very good at this uh, with lots of practice. The intuitive listener isn't just listening for what the person is saying, but also what they're not saying. This can be tricky at first, and it's definitely something you have to practice and learn how to do. But the intuitive listener is using a combination of empathy, verbal and nonverbal cues to really understand what's going on with the person. So somebody, going back to the example of talking with their spouse, the spouse is sharing, man, I had a really tough day today. We had a big loss at work and we're under a, a really tight deadline. The objective listener, of course, responds back with what they're saying. The intuitive listener will take it a step further. Babe, I'm really sorry to hear that. It sounds like you've got a lot going on at work. You guys suffered a big loss and you're under a deadline to get some things done. Correct me if I'm wrong, sounds like you need to have some fun tonight and just relax. Now the reason you say, correct me if I'm wrong, is as an intuitive listener, you may be misreading the emotion behind that statement. So if you are, you're giving yourself an out and allowing them to share, no, that's not what I'm actually saying. But offering what you think they need or want or what's actually going on emotionally with them will help them feel like you truly understand them and are connecting with them. Now I'm giving a pretty nominal or easy thing to explain, but this can go very deep with people. When they feel heard or understand, like you're getting not only what they're saying, but emotionally what's going on with them, they'll feel understood and like they genuinely matter. So influencing people very often comes through being a better listener than talking. And how we do that is by learning how to put on our objective listening cap and also learning how to use intuitive listening as a form of dialogue and allowing people to really feel understood. Remember, seek first to understand, then to be understood. 